Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, before I get started, I want to say a quick thank you to Julie, Kate and Catherine for Buy Me Coffees in the Buy Me Coffee app. Uh, very much appreciated. If anyone else is interested, you can find the link to my Buy Me a Coffee in the description, along with everything else. Who watched this video for the Chinese altar restoration? Um, so the pieces I'm working on today are for the same client. It's the second set in a set of three that I'll be doing for them. Uh, the footage for this video is probably going to be a bit all over the place because in between starting this set and finishing it, I've been sick, I've had a tattoo and taken a week off while it heals. Um, there's been other pieces I've worked on in the meantime because I needed a break from sanding and scraping and it's just, yeah, lots of sanding and scraping. Um, but a lot of it is going to be very similar to the first piece I did, the Chinese altar. Um, so there's going to be a lot of stuff left out and it will be a relatively short video because um, otherwise it's going to be very boring for you guys I think so yeah I'm going to try and keep it relatively simple this time around because otherwise it'll just be repeating itself so let's get started all right, first thing I'm doing this time around is taking off all the hardware and seeing if I can take these doors off. Okay, the plan was to strip this one using paint stripper like I did with the last one. That one there. But I have gone through a decent amount of paint stripper already and that's all I've managed to get off. This side has had two coats on it. Just so you understand what I'm dealing with. I don't know if it's just a thicker finish on this one or what or if it's just on the top. I'm hoping it's just the top. Um, but I've cleaned the paint stripper off of it and I'm going to sand the top of it and once I've done that I'll see what's going on with the rest of it and if I can use the paint stripper on the rest. I'm hoping I can because it'll be a lot easier for me. But let's see how it goes with the sander.
To strip these without disassembling them, I basically used my power sander on the outside parts, like the frame, and then I used um, carbide scraper. I have three to different carbide and scrapers, and I highly recommend you guys have more than one carbide scraper because this way you can have multiple blade shapes on the go without having to swap them around while you're working. All right, that has taken me the better part of a day to completely strip and sand back and I have three more to do. I can see how these are assembled so I'm going to have a go at pulling it apart to do the rest of them because I can't spend four days just doing that. Good thing about this is I don't, I'm not too concerned about whether I break anything because you know I can put it back together again. So yeah, I can't really record a great deal right now because it is currently 35 degrees Celsius and my phone keeps overheating, so I need to just, I'll have to just give little updates as I go. And of course sanding the rest of the body was pretty straightforward, I just literally just sanded everything and these things were light enough that I could put them up on my table and flip them around onto their sides and stuff to get in easier and then just use my cardboard scrapers to get into all the nooks and crannies. Okay, so I didn't want to have to physically hold each of these whilst I'm scraping them because that would be a pain in the ass. So, what I've done is I got these two little drawers that came out of a previous piece that aren't getting used, and I've got a strip of scrap plywood here. The grain is running that way, so it's not going to snap in the middle. Um, and I've clamped all of that down to the workbench with a gap in the middle there. It just happens to be the right length for everything. And these have nails in them, so I've just drilled a couple of holes there. I'll probably have to drill more holes for different ones because they're different distances apart, but that's not that big a deal. It'll take like two seconds to do. And now that's held down nice and firm for me to scrape and sand and I'll just turn it around when I need to do the other side. Okay so dismantling these side parts took a lot of trial and error and a lot of brute force but the best method I found was to use these clamps so I basically swapped the ends around and pushed the ends apart to pull them apart. I did have to use the heat gun a little bit to try and soften the glue in the joints but they came apart really easy after that. I then also use the clamp in the same manner to push the dowel parts apart. Apparently I can't word very well at the moment, I need coffee. It did take some time to pull them apart but I would rather do this than have to fuss around getting into all those little spaces with the carbide scraper. I also made sure I kept all of the parts separate, so in their own groups. There was a bit of damage, um, but you know, that was really easy to fix and wasn't an issue. Okay, so by a little bit of damage, I mean quite a bit of damage. But it's all good. It's still good. Okay, so I opted for a different method to sand the spindles and this was a lot more time efficient. To hold the end of the spindle, I, or the dowel, I drilled a hole in the side of my workbench to hold it into and it worked so well. Once everything was all smooth sanded, I gave it all a really good clean with methylated spirits to get any sawdust out of the grain, otherwise you will end up with 
you might end up with some like milky finish and it'll look all cloudy and not very good. So this will help I'm ensure using that you get a nice clear clean coat finish. in my Azito spray gun. It is a satin finish and really easy to work with. It literally took me a minute and a half to do one coat on this piece and I smooth sanded in between coats and did another two coats. Two weeks later, I thought I had all of the sanding and scraping done on this, these pieces, but as it turns out, I forgot to do the inside of the drawers and I really didn't want to leave them dark. They were as dark as like what's on the back of the drawer there in the bottom of the screen. Um, I used my electric sander to sand everything I could and then went in with my carbide scrapers and a piece of sandpaper to clean up the rest of it. Once the third coat was dry, I used Cartamilli hemp oil and some 2000 grit sandpaper and wet sanded everything to get it baby bottom smooth. I really wanted to show the difference that wet sanding can make but it really wasn't showing up on camera on the sealed surfaces so I'm showing it on the side here where I haven't sealed it with clear coat. So this is using the Cartamilli hemp salve rather than the hemp oil. You can use either one of them but obviously you can see which part of this was wet sanded and which part is just raw wood and it makes such a huge difference and took like five seconds to do so that's just wet sanding with the uh, wet dry sandpaper and then buffing it with a microfiber cloth huge difference If things seem a little out of order in this video, it's because I'm working on both pieces um, and I'm just taking footage from, doing footage from both of them individually and putting it together. Uh, but this is just me install, reinstalling the side panels. I'm running a bit of glue around the inside of the frame. You could also put it on the edge of the uh, panel itself. I just find this to be easier and it also helps it slide into place better. I didn't have any trouble getting this side in. Um, it, you know, fit like a glove, really easy. Uh, the other side, however, took a bit of bashing. <sighs> Alright, you guys have heard me talk about me using the Ozito spray gun and how much I've used it and how I like it, and I seem to have gotten lucky with the one that I got. Um, because apparently the rest are absolute <laughs> So, got down to about there, was almost finished spraying this part and that <laughs> thing died on me. So, <sighs> I was literally only talking to a friend yesterday about upgrading to a Wagner when I can afford to do it. Um, could it not have waited until I actually had the <laughs> Wagner? Seriously. <sighs> Anyway, I reverted back to a brush and it took me a couple of days to brush everything twice and hemp oil and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so now it's just down to assembling everything. All right, on the off chance that someone else is doing one of these and pulls it apart and takes the doors off, make sure you look at these because you'll see that they are slightly different. So that one's got a smaller gap than that one. This one's deeper. These ones go on top and I'll show you why. So you'll see this gap here. This is where that part of the door goes. And you'll also notice that one of these is shorter than the other. So this part goes at the top and this one goes at the bottom and that gap also matches up with that, whereas this one doesn't. So this one will go on the bottom and unless you're putting in new nails or new staples, make sure you check the distance between the nails because it might not go there. These ones are spread out a bit, but yeah. Sometimes it's a bit of trial and error. When I put the doors back on the other one, I had to take these off a few times and move them around to make sure I got the right placement of them, but I got it eventually. So hopefully these ones are all right too.
It was at this point I realised I hadn't done the hardware. I'm not going to show you the whole process but I gave everything a good clean and polish starting with 400 grit sandpaper, uh, wet dry sandpaper, 4 steel wool, brasso and gave it a good buff when I was finished. This one was missing its lock, so I altered some of these locks off, I think it was Amazon. I will try and find it and link it in the description. It didn't fit very well because it was a bit skinnier than the original, but it still works. Quick reminder of what they looked like before. And now looking brighter, cleaner, and much more refined. All right, guys, that is it for these ones. And hopefully the owners will be 100% happy with them because I know I am. They look bloody amazing, if I do say so myself. Um, I will be taking a break from the restorations again and working on a couple other things that are coming up. One of them is going to be a piece for a challenge that I am co-hosting. The other piece that I'm going to be doing, I will do it and sell it and the proceeds go to a charity. <laughs> words are failing me but I'll show you the the third and final restoration piece that goes with these other ones that I've done dun 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 yeah baby so I've left this one for last because it not only has these pieces are like light as a feather by the way um, not only has all these finicky little details out, I don't think these are going to be as bad as the details on the altar or the spindles or the dowels on those um, because they are flat surfaces, I will be, they'll be kind of easier to get into but the reason I left this one for last is because it's kind of gross no offence to the owners, I think there was some flood damage with these um, and as you can see there, there is damage that needs to be repaired. But yeah, this is the final piece in the puzzle. These are cool. Um, I, I'm kind of excited to do this one, but I'm also dreading it as well. But uh, yeah. Before I let you go, um, you may have seen that I have set up a membership program. I won't go into full detail of it because there is a video and I will link that video in the description of this video. Um, but I will say, what the one thing I will say is it is cheap, cheap as chips. Um, so most people should be able to afford it. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. Um, you will not be missing out. You will not be losing anything that you already get. I'm not taking anything away from anyone. It's just extra benefits or perks or whatever you want to call it. But please do check that out. Um, I've got several people in the membership already and I'm just absolutely blown away by everyone. And yeah, without getting all sappy. Um, don't, forget to, don't forget to check the description for everything used in this video as well as my Amazon wish list, buy me a coffee, and now my membership video. Um, all right, I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching guys and I will catch you on the next one.